Uh, hello everyone, Dina here. I'm going to do a tutorial on CodeWizard PS3, which is a program I released kind of recently, uh, which allows you to assemble PPC into uh, hexadecimal code and shit. So, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to make a subroutine for this game, which allows you to move objects based on what object you shoot and uh, your current location and where you're looking. So, for instance, if I were to hit this object with that and I'd look, I'd hold the button of course, I'd look up, it would be like in front of me and up a bit. Look down, it would be down in front and spin around, blah blah blah. It would work like that and that would allow me to move the object around the map at will. So uh, yeah, let's get started. Uh, first off though, I do have a few things that I've already found, I guess, uh, so I don't have to find them for you. Uh, in the video. So we have the joker address which allows me to tell what buttons being pressed, the pointer to what object I shot which we'll look into in a second, uh, the address of where my player's XZY is and it's XZY not XYZ in this game for some reason, uh, my player's orientation so I know there's better words for this but I just use left and right up and down so you know left, right, up down kind of thing. Um, and the offset, the difference between these two addresses is a hexadecimal 20, so pay attention to that and I'll mention up later, but because of that I'm just going to use this instead of that. Alright, so let's look at the pointer. So in the debugger, go to the address, so it's already pointing to something. But I did shoot a few things. We'll go to there, and right here you see all the data properties of this object. What's important for now, because we're just in this video, we're just going to do translation, so moving across the map. Uh, these are the uh, coordinates. So, like, if I were to change the Y to an E, it would. Uh, let me go find what I. I don't actually know what I changed, what I was touching. Hmm. Oh, well, I guess that's a lost cause. <laughs> Alright, uh I I guess this is bad, but um bad example. Point is though, uh that is the this is the X C Y of the object, so that's important to pay attention to. So let's get started with making the subroutine. I've already made a file for it, and I have a directory with all the stuff I'll need. Um, this right here is actually because the two. This is what we're writing to. This is this is a working version. I kind of made it beforehand so I know what to do and not stutter and be confused and have to solve problems in front of you. And it would be more of a tutorial rather than a walk like me uh, figuring it all out for the first time. Okay, so initially we're going to set the address of where this subroutine is going to take place in the memory, and then we're also going to set the hook to what's uh, going to be calling, like, what game function is going to be calling this every, you know, whatever times. Um, yeah, so that's the hook for this game, and that's where I'm going to put it. Okay, next thing is we need to set up the stack, so create stack I guess or allocate we're gonna s store r1 at negative 50 r1 and we're gonna do stdu so it updates it to r1 update r1 there we are. Uh, and then we're gonna store actually no we're gonna move from lr r0 so we're gonna move the value at le the le the value at the link register into r0 then we're gonna store r0 into the stack Oh, that was bad. Thankfully, we have undo. So, std r14. Okay, at this point, I'm just going to copy paste. So, 5, 6, 8, 20. Uh, and then we have stfs f0. And we're going to do. Oh, there's actually one more. Hold on. 31. Okay. And then we're going to do 40. And then 1 of 2. 
two and then four and then eight. So because we're storing a double word for all of these, we're gonna add the offset by eight each time. And then because we're storing a single word for this, uh, we're gonna add by four. Because four bytes for a word, eight bytes for a double word. And that's the stack. So the next thing we're gonna do is destroy the stack. And in this, we're pretty much gonna copy that. Add back to R1 the what we subtracted and then BLR. So this needs to reverse though and become load double. And then MTLR. So it loads the what the what the link register held back into R0 and then it stores what is in R0 into the link register. And then these just load back up. And that's good. Okay, so that's, and then we're gonna create a level, map editor, exit. This is, you'll see why we'll add that. And then just as a thing, we'll do check if valid, just kind of a walkthrough. And then we'll check if L3 is, cause um, we're gonna have L3 be the button we press to activate the uh, moving around and stuff. And then translate object. So this will actually move the object around. So first thing we're going to have to, oh actually one more thing. Uh, we're going to create a label called map editor var uh, variables. And in here we're going to have pretty much all the stuff we have in here, but not quite. So first thing we'll have is uh, so pointer to shot object. Then we'll have player x, z, y, and then player or orientation with uh, left and right. And if you add 20, you'll get down. And then we'll have uh, joker address right here. And then we'll have radius, which I'll get to later, as a float. So with the float command, you're allowed to insert a float and it'll convert it to hex and insert it into the assembly and then hex code will just convert the hex into assembly into the assembly uh, so x e y all right that's pretty much all we have to do for that Oh, and one more thing. The set register R31 to uh, the bars. And I'm using, I'm using R31 because it's easy to remember that R31 points to uh, this area and such. Alright, so let's see. Check a valid pointer. Um, what we're going to have to do is load, we're going to use R14 because the point is going to be used throughout the whole subroutine, so it's not just one time, therefore it's important to uh, save it as a, uh, um, a non, I think it's, vo I don't know, anyway, pretty much um, other subroutines I get called will store this in the stack just like I did. And therefore, when it returns, it will load it back up as it were when it was called. Unlike, you know, registers like R3 and R5 or whatever, they would not be stored in the stack because they don't have to be. So, um, the pointer is offset of zero around R31. So we're going to do that, and then we're going to load what that pointer actually holds. And then we're going to compare if that's equal to zero because we want to know... If it's a valid pointer, it won't be pointed to zero. And we only want to be pointing to zero because otherwise, uh, um, we don't want it to be pointing to zero because if it were pointing to zero, it wouldn't be pointing to an object and we wouldn't be moving anything if we were even allowed, allowed to write to that area. So if it's equal to zero, branch to exit. 
Okay, we'll deal with that later. Right now we're gonna get to the translate object bit. Actually, this is so easy, we'll just do it now. Um, pretty much, you gotta load the joker address. Uh, I think it's offset of 10. So this would be 0, uh, 4, 8, C. T oh, wait, no, it's C. Okay, not 10. Alright, so it loads it. And then, so if we look at this. So this is the right here, this line. If I hold down R3, uh, this is the first byte, this is the second byte. So the second byte is equal to 2 when I hold down R3. So just to be as precise as possible, we're going to load the second byte, which is, um, the since it's 0 indexed, uh, 0 would be the f first byte, 1 would be the second byte. And then we're going to compare that with 2, and if it's not equal, we're going to exit. Yeah, okay, that's good. Translate object. This is the hard bit. Not the hard bit, the complicated bit. I've already kind of done everything in this subroutine I made, uh, which I have a video up on my channel of the PS2 version. Not as complicated as this version, but the same idea. Um, same basic idea. Um, what this does is, instead of tele moving an object based around where you're looking at and where you are, it moves you based around where you are and where you're looking at. So it's kind of like spectate mode. But like free spectate mode um, instead of fixed on a player. Um, yeah, okay, that's cool. So let me just copy this and explain it over here. I normally write it up, but this is like one of those things I don't really like doing because I've already done it once and I don't really have to do it again. So, first off, we're gonna need to set a few variables. Um, we're going to have to load into R15 the uh, orientation, which is an offset of 8. And then we're going to have to load into R16 the uh, player X, X, Z, Y. And then we're going to remove this and remove that and remove that or comment that out because we're not going to deal with it right now. And so let's see, this would be 16, 16, 16. Uh, and that's good. Okay, so what's going on here is um, this this is the uh, the orientation. So it loads the left and right orientation into the uh, register f0 which is the argument for cosine it calls cosine which performs cosine on it as a radian not as a degree it returns the result as f1 uh, f at the meantime though we uh, load into f0 the uh, x value of the player uh, this is because we want based around the player not around the object itself so um, yeah we're gonna Thanks, Windows. Very interested in what you have to say. Okay. <laughs> Freaking Windows. Um, yeah, so it's going to load this back up. It's going to add that. And then store it at the object. So as I said earlier, the offset is 10 and not 0. Because it's uh, this is where the X, Z, Y starts. Uh, and yeah. So this is the player. This is the player orientation. This is the object. And then the sign. So that's so for x we do cosine and we add it for z we do sine and we add it and for y we do sine and we subtract it and we use uh, the up and down orientation instead of um, left and right. All right, if I'm correct, which I always am, not really. I wish I was. That'd be kind of cool. Oh, I always forget about this. Um, one last thing is we're going to use the import command to actually import the sub the trig functions. So we have these two. Um, this this has something that this uses, but we don't use it ourselves, so we don't have to import this. We just need this. Uh, when this gets assembled, this will import that, and everything will work out. So import trig onom it tree dot cwp thirty. You can do full pass. You can do like dot dot slash, and you can do uh, 
functions, like, you can have directories and stuff. It works fine. And when you assemble that, you'll notice, like, it jumps up in size a lot. Uh, and that's good. So what we're going to do is we're going to test this program, or this subroutine, uh, like so. And we're going to learn that it doesn't work. <laughs> Obviously, nothing ever seems to work right. Oh, oh, no, 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 okay, okay. Yeah, never mind. Uh, I added, remember I added the joker. So only when I'm pressing L3 does it have an effect. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, so the radius right now, how far the object is away from me, is really, really low. In fact, it's equal to 1. So um, that's what the eight, the float of 8 was equal to, is how, f how many times the sign and the, all that trig stuff is going to be multiplied before it actually set it to, uh, you know, I actually affect the uh, object's thing. That's a lot of lag. Okay, point is, um, I have to add that in, which I've kind of already done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do LFS F2 uh, 10 R31, because this float is offset of 10. I'm going to uncomment all of these. So the uh, the radius is set to 8. And then I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to. So when I write this, it doesn't overwrite the subroutine, which may or may not be written, be like executing. And if I write, overwrite it while it's executing, it's probably going to give me an error. So. Yeah. All right. Now, what happens is that. So you can see it work a lot better because uh, now it doesn't actually touch me. Um, you also notice a lot of lag. <sighs> it's irritating. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all that this subroutine does. Uh, this is part one, though. I might do other parts. I'm not sure. Um, and yeah the power of code wizard. So thanks for watching and have a great day.